So before we put the cape on this guy, I went ahead and I preset the antlers. Um, I have another video on setting them, measuring them, making sure you got the angle right if you guys wanna go watch that. Other than that, uh, you just wanna make sure they're preset nicely. I'm gonna spray this guy with some water because he's drying out. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew these. Okay. Now for the exciting part. Just get that out of my way. And then I can get in here. Just stretch this guy out a little more. Now you wanna slide these over a little bit gently. You don't wanna, you don't wanna wreck your eyes. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and sew the, or sew, whoop. I'm gonna go ahead and screw the antlers into place. All right, that's looking pretty good. So for this part, I just mix up a little bit of uh, paper mache. Um, that's all it is, it's just paper mache and water. And I'm just gonna fill in this skull cap now. So I'll try to do this where you guys can see. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna um, just use my popsicle stick and I'm just gonna smooth it on and just rebuild that skull cap where it would have been. And this is where, again, a lot of people wanna make this really round and bulby. Guys, I hate to break it to you, deer have flat heads. <laughs> they really do. They're just like flat. So I like to just get it where I can kind of round and smooth that ridge out a little bit. I put a little bit up here on the seam but really, when you when you think about the fact that you're here, like you're rebuilding tissue, right? And there really isn't any meat on top of the skull. There's nothing on top of the skull that you need to rebuild. Um, all you're doing here is you're just wanting to smooth out the ridges. Um, that's kind of it. It's just smooth ridges, fill the gaps, fill in little cracks if there are any. Under the burr here, there's usually a nice big gap. Um, so that's kind of all we're doing with this. We're just gonna go ahead and smooth it out. All right, that is it. So we're gonna just go ahead and let that dry. Um, cover the eyes and nose while that dries so that they don't dry out. Then I'm gonna just put a bag over his face. Don't worry guys, he's already dead. There we go. Oh. All right, so we had a nice little lunch break. Um, this is nice and dry to touch now, so that's perfect. Uh, now the fun stuff begins. So we're gonna just start by putting some clay into our earbuds here. Basically what I like to do with my clay is just kind of roll it into just a bit of a, just a bit of a tube, especially with these earliners anyway, this is what I like to do. And then once I've got a little bit of a tube rolled out, I can curve it and contour it to the ear liner a little bit. And then I'm just gonna stick it in there. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in here because this filled up the back of the ear nicely, but I want some more on the front. Um, make sure that you put the same amount in both ears. I like the critter, critter clay just because it's a little bit more, uh, it's softer, easier to work with, easier to re-moisten if it uh, dries out on you a little bit. You don't have to worry too much about it. I'll just do the other ear here. So once we've got some clay in our ear butts, we can go ahead and start sewing up. This is where things get a little bit more exciting here. So I like to start with two needles. I have uh, just these S-curve needles. You can order them on Amazon or whatever. I get them from a taxidermy supplier here. Um, one just has a, a short thread on it and then the other one's got a really long thread on it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here before I sew up is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour some high paste. And I want enough that it can really get up around the burrs. You just don't want to get it on the hair. It's just enough to keep the skin from peeling away from the antlers as it dries. So I like to really just, like I say, lather it on there. You're not gonna hurt anything. Just really go ahead and slime this around. Try not to get it on the antlers like I just did. Cause then you just gotta clean it up after. It's not the end of the world if you do, but it's just makes life easier if you don't. So I'm just getting lots of it up in underneath the, the antler burrs here. And this, uh, this glue actually dries pretty transparent as well. 
So I'm not overly concerned if I do get it up under or on the antlers. I'm just trying to do it. <laughs> Marielle protesteth. I'll find out, I'll find the start of my burr here, which is right, right here. And I will go ahead and grab that. Pull that through, find the other end, which is over here. And then I will uh, go ahead and stitch this up. Make sure it's tucked under the burr really nicely. You can go ahead and sew down. Uh, I'm gonna just join up with my other thread, sew down the back of the neck, and then we can work the hide into position. For now, I'm just leaving my ears alone for the most part. You know, I might bring them up like this, get them into just roughly where they need to be to help make my skin a little bit easier to sew. As I was saying, not too hard to sew up a deer. I use the whip stitch same as before when I was sewing up the holes and stuff. So anyway, we can kind of start like getting things in place a little bit here. The biggest thing is make sure they're symmetrical. Um, I don't like to do both forward if I can help it. I like to do one listening or something. It's, it's a lot more forgiving. Um, with this deer particularly, he wanted them both forward. So we're gonna give him a nice forward look. Um, the biggest thing that a lot of people will do is they'll turn their ears upward and you don't want that. You want them to be tipped down, like don't don't catch water with them, right? All right, hopefully I can do this without bumping this out of the camera. So um, we've got them flipped upside down now. I'm just gonna roll my skin back. I've got quite a bit of extra lip skin here. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim a little bit of it off. And uh, once I've got a good even trim, we will go ahead and tuck, and you guys should already know by this point how to turn your lips and do all that. These lips are nicely turned. I'm bouncing a baby on one foot. Once I've done that, I'm gonna peel this back. I'm gonna get my glue on there, but first I'm gonna just add a little bit of clay to my lip line where my bottom lip would go right here. And again, that just gives me a little bit more of a pouty lip. Same thing with my top lip. <laughs> Give him some fat lips. All right, once I'm ready here, I'm gonna just go ahead and add some glue. And again, this is here just to help everything ooh, stay in place. But then we'll just come up here with our top lip to push it all into place as well. Work it into where it needs to go. And then same thing, I'm gonna come into our top lip first. I'm 
Sorry if I missed the bottom lip. I wasn't paying attention to the camera there. But uh, it's the same as the same as the top lip. If I miss the bottom lip, um, you just work it all into place, and then you just come in behind yourself and just tuck it all nicely. And that is looking pretty good right there. Now. I'm gonna just clean this up a bit without having to worry about the camera angle. Huh? 